Let's do something interesting to start off this video. Uh, it'll, it'll be relevance later on, don't worry. Let's pretend you're a doctor, yes? That's kind of doctor. You have five patients in need of organ transplants. If they don't get them, they will die. You're a doctor. You don't want them to die, do you? <laughs> One day, a seemingly healthy person walks through your door for a routine checkup. As you check up on the individual, you realize this person's organs are a perfect match for the five patients you have in the bag. So do you then Michael Myers, the poor fella that saved the five patients, or do you let him walk free, meaning the five patients in the back die? Some of you might adopt the utilitarian approach and say, yes, he killed the bastard, harvest his organs. It's best for the group, then it's morally permissible. However, those of you on the deontological side might say, eh, I don't know, man, the ax outweighs the consequence. So while yes, you'd be saving five people, Killing the man to save them is morally impermissible. Regardless of whatever side you fall on, this problem does a good job at highlighting the doctrine of double effect, which is what I'd like to use when discussing Ryan Doder's actions instead of simply going, eh, Ryan Doder caused the cataclysm, so she's an evil bitch. I mean, let's have some class here, fellas. I mean, you're still free to do that, I suppose. Whatever, <laughs> to each their own. <laughs> I'm sure most of us know who Ryan Doter is, but it wouldn't hurt to give a brief overview of everything we know just to ensure we're all on the same page. Ryan Doter is or was an alchemist from Conria who is thought to have mastered an alchemical process known as the Art of Chemia. For those unaware, the Art of Chemia is a form of alchemy that specializes in creating life. Due to Conria being a subterranean nation, natural flora and fauna was few and far between, so thus the Art of Chemia came to be. If Albedo's words are to be believed, Ryan Doter is said to have achieved the apex achievement by creating human life. Aside from Albedo, she also created, well, another Albedo, <laughs> Durin, Rift Wolves, the Golden Wolf Lord, and it's all but confirmed she also made Elinos, or at the very least gave him his form. As you might have guessed based on this cast of rogues, Ryan Dota's version of the Art of Chemia seems to have done more harm than good. This could be why, according to Dainsliff, the Art of Chemia was one of the major reasons behind the fall of Conria. No one can dispute Albedo's talent, but the source of the knowledge he possesses. It once brought about the destruction of a glorious nation, and the essence of his knowledge is equally unknown. But I know it well. It hails from Kanria, the art of Chemia. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines, but if Albedo were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. While the order of events is still up for debate, one fact ultimately remains true, and it's that Ryan Doder's creation spread all over to that, causing chaos wherever they went. Durin plagued the Mondstadt to the point that the animal Archon had to awaken once more. Rift Wolves had invaded Inazuma. Elinaz was poisoning the waters of Fontaine. It's common belief in, well, Mondstadt at least, that Ryan Doder simply woke up one day and chose violence. As the book Breeze Amidst the Forest writes, quote, the Eclipse Dynasty had fallen and disaster spread across the land. The alchemist known as Gold became a sinner and gave rise to countless monsters. In reality, however, it seems as if some of her monsters, such as Durin and Elinos, had no ill will, but due to the abyssal nature with which they were created, wrought havoc wherever they went. Durin's case is... an especially sad one, as despite being displayed like this, this, this propaganda. Durin was actually a kind-hearted dragon. Shortly after Durin was made, he said this, quote, Thank you, mother, thank you. You gave me wings to soar in a mighty form. Mother, I wish to go to a land of lovely songs. I will tell them about you, mother, and about everyone else. I shall tell them that the place where I was born is beautiful. When he got to Mondstadt, he dreamed he and Devalin were actually dancing in the skies and that Barbados was playing music for them. It wasn't until Devalin cut Durin's throat and Durin lay on Dragonspine bleeding out that he realized they were killing him. In his final moments, he harbored no ill will towards anyone and simply said, Farewell, mother. My journey is ended. I shall sleep beneath this white shining silver, and perhaps this too is good. Farewell, O oh lovely bard, and farewell, O oh lovely dragon. Would that we had met in a different time and place, to meet and sing and dance together. Now then, this great blessing that pulses through my veins, 
and lovely sight of the dark universe that gave me birth. They are now yours to inherit. I should point out, it, it, it isn't really known if Rhinodor knew what her creatures were doing throughout Tabat, but like, come on, man. She must have at the very least known what, what they were capable of. My bro, my, my man, my bro Doran ain't deserved that, dog. Fuck this bitch alone just for that, man. My, they, they hold my nigga, bro. He just wanted to be happy, and it was just... Expect my discontent with her at this very moment to be reflected in my final judgment of her. She's finna get the nigga fist to do. <laughs> the rest of Ryan Yoder's story is a bit of a mystery. She created the current Albedo sometime after the Cataclysm. They found the heart of Niberius, and then she immediately thought to herself, damn, this would be a this would be a great time to go out and grab some milk. <laughs> Peaced out and was never heard from again. So, I mean, that's about it for all her actions. Now, while we don't know enough to fully understand why she did what she did, eh, fuck it. This one's from my, from my dog, Durin, bro. Ryan Doder's actions can be broken up pretty easily using something called the Doctrine of Double Effect. What this effect essentially aims to do is judge whether an action can be considered morally permissible or not. In Ungabunga terms, it argues that it's worse for a person to bring about a bad intended consequence than for a person to bring about a bad consequence that was merely a possibility provided the person's intentions were good, which I, I think most of us would agree with. Uh, I'm not really sure where we are in the fucking moral compass. <laughs> so in this case, let's try and add Ryan Doder's decision to use Abyssal Powers in the creation of some of her life forms. For an action to be okay according to the double effects, it must fulfill these requirements. 1. The action itself must be morally good or indifferent. 2. The agent intends only the good effects and not the bad effects. 3. The good effects cannot be achieved through the bad effects. And 4. The good effects must be proportionate to the bad effect. So, applying this to Ryan Doder's case, what do we have? Well, let's go one by one and check. First intention. I'll give Ryan Doder the benefit of the doubt and say initially, her intention was likely noble, you know, to create life in a kingdom devoid of its possibly to bring joy, companionship, or some other positive aspect to the underground kingdom. I, I should note, we don't know, you know, when the Art of Chemia was made versus when Ryan Doder started using it for whatever the fuck purpose, but uh, I'll, I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. However, as she delved deeper into forbidden magic, her intentions may have become more self serving or misguided, possibly driven by a desire for power or recognition, so keep that in mind. 2. Foreseeability Rhindoder must have foreseen the potential consequences of using abyssal powers. While she may not have intended for her creations to become corrupted or bring about the downfall of the Empire, she likely recognized the risks associated with dabbling in dark or forbidden arts. I mean, either that or she's just a fucking idiot. Can we just like, <laughs> come on guys? <laughs> 3. Proportionality The positive outcome of creating life in a lifeless kingdom may have seemed to outweigh the potential negative consequences at first, however, as the situation escalated and the creatures became corrupted and the fucking empire was, uh, no more, <laughs> we can clearly say that the harmful consequences far outweighed any of the perceived benefits. And finally, 4. Non-use of means to bad ends Initially, Ryan Doder's intention may have been to create life using permissible means, also known as the Art of Chemia. However, as she decided to alter this shit and throw in some abyssal powers, the means she used became a lot more morally questionable, especially if the downfall of the Empire is a direct result of her using this abyssal power. Then we could say the bad consequences are directly linked to her actions. So, with all this put together, I feel like we can come to the conclusion that the great sinner Ryan Doder is evil. <laughs> or at the very least, her actions violated the doctrine of double effects and are on morally shaky ground here, all right? So, I mean, in spite of everything I just did here, I came to the same conclusion as some of you unga bunga apes who just sat here and went right at the beginning, she started the cataclysm, yeah, she's evil! Yeah, yeah, here, yeah, I'm on the I'm on the same page as you. But doesn't this this feels like we did the proof for the for the for the math problem, huh? It feels good, huh? No? Okay. <laughs>